going over, you know, the Malibu Canyon and all that stuff. On a summer weekend, the whole place was nothing but KHJ radio. There were 5,000 transistor radios, and they were all on KHJ. And those were the days KHJ was getting, what, 70 shares? It never happened again, you know. And it was just one giant loudspeaker walking down the beach. And that's the voice of our guest, Artie Brayfogle. Now, last time, he was talking about some of his favorite podcasts and where he listens to them, as well as getting to cook around the house, something he loves. Now, what is your favorite dish to cook? Uh, honest to God, you wouldn't believe it. It's probably just eggs, uh, you know, with some uh, stuff cut up in it, some pepperoni or whatever, and, and you know, garlic and um, cheese and uh, and then, little, you know, maybe if I'm in a meaty day, some uh, uh, hickory smoked bacon on the side mm. from Sam's Club that's all drenched. That stuff's really good for like 13 14 bucks. 14 um, You never buy the store bacon anymore. That stuff's horrible. A little thin wafer stuff for like $8. Forget mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, and of course, living in Vegas over the years, it used to be in the old days, every corner in town had one or two bars that were open 24 hours a day with uh, not only the gambling at the bar, tabletops, but you had food. And uh, some were better than others, and greasy spoons. And of course, those are pretty much all disappeared now because they've got all these big chains and PTs locally owned by all these big corporations and stations, casinos, getting into that. And, and it pretty much did away with all that. It was a money thing. They, people weren't making enough money because most of the people were in there. They they ran the kitchens separately, so they'd pay the guy that owns the place a fee or percentage or whatever. And that's how they made their living. And, wow. God, the food. I mean, you always know you could go out at 4 in the morning and have a $600 cheeseburger. You know what I mean, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But you get comped on that damn burger. Wow, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> I remember seeing billboards years ago for Kenny Rogers uh, for Barona Valley Ranch in San Diego County. And the uh, billboard had him, and it says, I bet big, I'll get my rooms comped. Yeah, I remember that. That was a good campaign. Um, and once again, talking to people normal. I mean, it's not like, come where Kenny Rogers stays. I don't. Give a damn to Kenny Rogers stays there, you know, but if he gets his room comped, maybe I can get it comped. Let's go. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about. Uh, one quick story about Century Cable. I, I always thought there was a guy, Bill, God, what was his name? He was a GM of Century, and um, he lived like three blocks off in Venice. He wasn't actually on the system, and I remember they ran the line to his house, <laughs> totally illegal, but they did it and so he could watch the system all the time. And he became a like a city councilman or something. Or, Bill Rosendahl? Yeah, yeah. Sweetheart of the guy. Did you ever meet him? I never did, but I remember his shows on uh, Century Cable. And, yeah, he would uh, sit there, and he, he was not the, the most showbiz guy. But, no, uh, but it, yeah. was, it was just down to earth, you know, very good interviews, yep. very yep. kind of thought-provoking, and and uh, was like a community forum, if you will. He was, a, he was a good listener, and he was a good manager in regards that he'd listen, and then he'd make his decision and usually make the right one. I remember he called me one day. He said, come on down to the office. I go down there, and he goes, I got a call from uh, – uh, was it the Sports Channel? Well, up against ESPN and LA. Yeah, it was uh, called Sports Channel. Replaced the Z Channel, I remember. Yeah, the Sports Channel. It was a standalone thing, and they had their own studio guys, and, and they carried, like, the Dodgers and stuff like that. You know the one I'm talking about. I, I think yeah. there's another name to it. But I oh, Prime Ticket? Prime Ticket. That was it. Very good. I'm, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> thank you. But, the, the bottom line, I get a call, uh, or he got a call from the GM there, and said, who is this Art Breifogel guy? And he said, why? So he's doing promos all the time, and he's pitching ESPN on our Prime Ticket channel, because we could run local commercials on Prime Ticket on Century Cable. Get it? So I used every hole, once again, to, you know, hi, I'm the guy down here. Come on, give me a call, and we'll make it work for you. And he was livid. Get his ass off my channel, pitching ESPN. So Rosenthal looks at me, and he goes, what do you think? I said, I think that's cool. You got that upset. <laughs> Is there any legality problems? He goes, none. He said, I said, we just keep on doing it and making some money off it. He goes, done. I'll tell him. And that's what he did. 
<laughs> that guy, I remember I saw him at a couple of parties. He never came over to meet me at all. He'd just go the other way. <laughs> I thought, well, Bill, that was pretty cool, man. That was, uh, you know, and you didn't, through your career, you wouldn't meet a lot of people like that. Uh, you were fortunate when you did. And you appreciated it because so many managers and stuff, so many were family people or whatever, and you know, just you know, going on and on. And so many people not qualified. It was just a, a joy to run into somebody that loved the business and wanted to foster the business and took care of the people. That was a rarity. And uh, you know what I'm talking about. You were oh, yeah. some people like that. A different time back then. Never come back again. I'm so glad I've lived it. Um, you know, when the train comes to the station, it could be soon. I'm 75. Uh, once again, Mom lived to be almost 90. God, I hope I don't last that long. But you never know when the ticket's going to be cashed. And uh, I got a phony hip. They were going to cut my nose off last year and amputate it with cancer. And I was lucky to find a German lady who was a doctor here, and she saved my nose. I'm a little weird. It's an angle. And I've got, like, lots of Shakespeare stuff on the top, where Shakespeare uh, Frankenstein stuff, where she cut all the stuff around. But, you know, if you come out and the sun isn't too bright, you don't see it that much. And the nose looks like I lost a fight. But the interesting thing about the nose right now, I looked at it, it's all dark. And the whole bottom third and left nostril. Because what she did, she took all the skin from my head and put it and grafted it down there. So the mm. hair follicles are still in there. I can grow little uh, Heidi uh, braids in my outer nose. It's really fun. So I have to shave my nose every three days. Oh. <laughs> now, you tell me somebody is doing that. And I'll tell you somebody I want to meet. <laughs> <laughs> too bad. Too bad. I've got a secret as an on anymore. You could go on there. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Uh, yeah, I I enjoy to this day waking up, blue sky up above, and you know you got another day. I mean, I just I I'm always busy. Facebook, I'm doing discogs. I've got five thousand albums. Gee, I wonder why I'm into that. From being a kid, <laughs> bugging them around, and I I write reviews and. Um, it just, I'm always doing something to keep busy. I should probably do something to try to make money on it, but, uh, you know, it's so be it. Doing voiceovers anymore is pretty much a dead industry with all the stupid AI stuff. That's so bad. I listen to that stuff on the internet and go, who approved this? I mean, you know. Especially when they mi mispronounce a oh. person's name. I mean, in the old days, you know, we used to have those ads for the uh, the Wilderness family, and it was in 8,000 cities. We're in Fresno, and you get the tag, you know, and Dinuber and uh, Reedley, and everything's mispronounced, you know. <laughs> you know, we all knew, and we'd laugh at it because of some bozo in Wisconsin did the, you know, the trailer voiceover. But, uh, yeah, you're right. The AI today is just, it's just great. Show. And then when they mispronounce it totally, you just go, good God. I mean, I usually turn off the YouTube channel if I realize it's AI. Yeah, I, I, those like twenty-minute shows, you know, and they're all phony, you know, and just you know, just really horrible stuff. Um, one quick story about Camp PC. Uh, I was in the jingles for years. I just loved jingles. That's one of the things that got me in radio uh, when I was a sub team. Listen to KFWB, KFWB, Channel ninety eight, Color Radio. And all that stuff. Uh, and then, of course, the great package for KHJ, you know, reading Jacob's book and everything else, Ron Jacobs, the PD, and he hired Johnny Mann. And yeah, I'm sure you know the story. Mm -hmm. Johnny Mann was brought in just as they were kicking off the radio station. <laughs> and they had to do it real quick because they were going to be taught by KFJ. They'd be somebody stole the idea. They found out about it. And they were going to break it over there. That's how doggy dog radio was back in those days. And they had to get man in, and it was a, a strike going on. There were no musicians. So that is why the original jingle package of Johnny Men Singers is a cappella. And to that, it was better. Mm. 93 KHA, Million Dollar Weekend, and the harmony of all those guys and gals. There's one video on YouTube showing them produce years later some jingles with man. And he was a fascinating talent. Uh, he was the guy that was always up. And he was a band leader. He did a lot of say. He'd been the band leader for the Joey Bishop show on ABC late night and all that stuff. But the bottom line is that that is what really made Kate Shea Cook, in my mind, is this, you know, of course, with Bill Drake, top of the hour, you know, if anyone should last, ask, you're listening to, you know, KHJ, Los Angeles, drop it, boom, there you go. Um, it jingles. 
the, you know, 2020 news, the little dung, 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 dung. I mean, it, it, that was radio. That was a subliminal thing that could always work. And whether you were concentrating on it, I remember going to Zuma Beach. What beach did you go to as a kid? Um, usually Santa Monica. Yeah, okay. Well, you're just north. I like to go down by the... Uh, by the uh, plant where they process the sewage because it would come out and be warmer water there. You know, yeah. <laughs> supposedly they cleaned it up, but occasionally see stuff floating going by, but whatever. Um, but of course, we did Santa Monica too, but mostly it was Zuma, um, uh, going over, you know, the Malibu Canyon and all that stuff. And I remember one time going there on a summer weekend, you know, just walking around from the first food shack down further. I didn't like to be down there. Too many people like me down more by the lifeguard building and all that. And uh, the whole place was nothing but KHA radio. There were 5,000 transistor radios, and they were all on KHA. And those were the days KHA was getting, what, 70 shares and all that? I mean, it was just through the roof. It never happened again. You know, everybody listened to KHA. And it was just one giant loudspeaker walking down the beach. It was just one after another listening to Don Steele on the weekends or whatever. One great story about Don Steele. I ended up talking to his wife over the years uh, after he had passed. And I never met him. I saw him in the halls, the case Shea and all that. I wouldn't go to radio down there. They were very, they, they were very, you can't go in there and all that. I could have, but I just didn't. Uh, he knew a couple of guys that worked there. The guy that came around always looking for tail was uh, uh, J. Paul Heddleston. Mm. J. Paul was about five foot four. And he had the old face for radio, you know, the dead <laughs> great. J. Paul Huddleston, KHJ 2020 News. And that's what's happening now. And this is what's happening in 1964. You know, anyway. Um, and he would come around to the sales department upstairs where the secretaries were sniffing on them and going, hi, I'm J. Paul for downstairs. And, of course, most of them would go, who is that creepy guy? You know, he was a nice guy. He just, when he was bored, he'd walk around. Um, so I go, well, what was I going to tell you about? Um, no, it'll come back to me being old. One day I'm in my office. I found out years later where I was scheduling commercials at KHJ. That was the old Columbia uh, record studio before it became Capitol, before they built the round building, you know, the tower in mm-hmm. Hollywood and Vine. And uh, where I was working was right where the audio booth was, where they had the singers. And that's where Sinatra did tons and tons of songs, right where my desk was. And I didn't know that till after I had left. And uh, obviously the, the vibes in that building, it's still there. It's part of Paramount. It's, I think it's part of their uh, security building or something now. It's all closed off across from uh, the cafe across the street, uh, the Mexican place. Uh, the great, uh, oh, uh, Don Steele. I'm talking to her on the phone, his wife. And she had been around bouncing from radio stations. She was uh, doing records. Uh, in those days, to be the record librarian was a big deal. You know, that was the station was what records she had and everything else. And she did promotions and stuff. And she was a nice lady. Don, uh, uh, actually, Revert went to Hollywood High. Most people mm-hmm. don't know that. He actually grew up in Hollywood, California. And, uh, uh, Don, uh, I know the stories I've heard later years were so deaf. He had to blast the mm-hmm. music so loud. You go in the studio. Did you ever get involved with that or get around him? Well, I never met Don. However, Sean, his wife, gave me my first paying gig in radio. You're I was kidding. where? Uh, Oldies 93 KCBS FM. Don had just left that station to go to KFL. Yeah, yeah. I remember when he went over there. Yeah, Because yeah. he got an offer that was too good to refuse. And so he was afternoons on KRF while his wife was music director of the competing oldie station. Yeah. And I didn't realize it She's until a sweetheart. When she, she a was woman? very, she passed away last year. I was That's so right. heartbroken about that. She was the one keeping Don's uh, memory alive. I even said to her, you always have an open invitation to come here on the program. And she, she put a heart on that, that as a reply. And uh, unfortunately, I never got to talk to her about Don. She she didn't like to go out. I wanted to come to L.A. and just have lunch with her. And she says, I, I just don't go out much. I don't know what it was, if she had a problem with health or whatever. Um, but here's the story she told me. When I was at Century T- Cable doing all those weird ads with the hats and all that other stuff, you know, and I, you know, Santa Claus or a clown hat, whatever it was. <laughs> she said Don would sit on the sofa in Westwood where they lived. And he goes, Art, do it, man. Kill him, kill him. They're killing him. Boy, yeah. 
And she goes on and on telling me how when I come on a different, he would just go crazy. She said he loved you. And I went in the other room after I hung out from her. I cried in front of my Ooh. wife. I said, my hero knew me. And I never knew him. And now 20 years later, I find out about it. Mm. It was so bittersweet. I mean, imagine the feeling you would get from that. And it just, to this day, it tears me up. Um, and it, I did a video. I did a number of old videos. I've got the uh, L.A. Golden Radio Days and I uh, put stuff on there and and I, I got a long tape from somebody, and what it was was Don on uh, Saturday afternoon, and it was what you heard mostly was him in the studio off air setting up the contestants for the contest he was going to give. He didn't give them the answer, but here's what I want you to do. Da, da, da. And one kid I remember got on there. He was 10 years old from Orange County. Now, today, I'd never let a 10-year-old kid go on the radio. But, you know, back then, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. The kid was very bright. And he had to do a Tarzan yell. So I said, okay, I want you to do this as Tarzan. And uh, the kid wasn't that good. And he said, do it like this. And he did it two times for the kid. <laughs> and the kid did it on air. And you hear him when he finally comes back. He says, okay, on the line from Orange County is, you know, little Johnny James. Johnny, who was da, 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 da. And he'd already given the answer. So he won the contest. He goes, Tarzan. He goes, yeah. And how did Tarzan sound? And the kid goes, ah, yeah. And it was, it, it's still on YouTube. You can look it up a little down still. Um, and he just, that was him. He was a real deal guy. He wasn't fake in any way, shape, or form. And you could tell by just listening to that short clip there of how he treated human beings. Mm -hmm. He was just a wonderful guy. And there were a number of, like, two other contestants that were, and he just treated them just lovely. And, um... I, you know, that was a rarity in the business. You know, Robert W. Morgan, I loved him. He was wonderful, but you hear the stories about him. Boy, and oh, he, for yeah. a long time, he was not a good cat at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, just drinking and carrying on, doing all the stuff he did. Not that Don didn't drink. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess the classic stories of him going out, you know, Dan Tannis and all that other stuff. But, uh, well, it's funny with, you mentioned the Red Line Steel because he and Robert W. Morgan were friends, but even sometimes they had a falling out and usually it was Morgan's fault. Um, like one time Tom Murphy told me the story that, uh, Robert invited Don to go bass fishing with him and uh, Don t turned down the invitation and Morgan wouldn't speak to him for several months. And oh, so man, Don said jerk. to yeah, all those years together too. And, and Don said to world famous Tom Murphy, I'm from Hollywood, baby. I don't bass fish. <laughs> and so a couple of years later, <laughs> that is that is so him. I love that line. <laughs> and so, a couple of years later, uh, Tom said to Don, "Is like I don't understand, Don. Why Bob was number one in in Los Angeles radio by the time he was twenty nine years old. Came to LA radio, morning drive at age twenty eight. He's got lots of money, successful voiceover. Why is he so miserable?" And Don said, "Cause he bass fishes, baby." <laughs> I guess once he had his daughter, he kind of mellowed out in later life and all that. But still, he was not an easy guy, I guess, to work with. We're in conversation with Artie Brayfogle. Check out our Instagram at JoshDJ57. That's JoshDJ57. I like to uh, do food reviews there. i got to tell Artie about that one. And next time, Artie tells us more stories about 93KHJ.